Cassidy is a Foursquare Mark Farm, and I've been working on getting ready for my sock yarn class that I'm going to have ready on Teachable, hopefully by the end of February. There's a lot of hard work and behind the scenes going on. In the meantime, I thought I'd make a video because since most of my energy is going to go towards the sock yard video, um, and building up inventory for my Etsy store, I thought maybe it might be a while before I have a video to post. So I just thought I'd throw this together and spin a little alpaca. Okay, so now if you remember from the other video, there was that big bag of white alpaca that I've been working on forever. And uh, that's where the fiber from the prayer shawl and uh, Sandy's yarn came from. And I'm getting towards the bottom of the bag. And you know, I know I'm getting towards the bottom of the bag because I'm starting to see uh, a few poop tags and uh, a little more VM. And that's where it all settled. So if you're familiar with how I do things, I have that gigantic hand carter. And basically, I just flick through the ends. So I'm going to do some flicking uh, before I feed this through the drum carter. Now look at these lovely locks. Look at that crimp. And I'm going to get the measuring tape or the ruler and measure them. And let's see from the inside. How many inches is that? And stretched out is about six not stretched out. Well, it's a little more than six stretched out, not stretched out. It's longer. Six and a half. Boom. Six. So that's a really nice staple length. And I've just got a little bit of VM. It's not heavy. It's just a little bit of VM. Look at that. That is gorgeous. And I, I just take the fiber, of course, lay it down and run it past the hand quarters. And you know what, because there's only a little bit of VM in this, and this is alpaca and not wool, I don't even have to go through my usual procedure of uh, spreading it out and opening the locks and all that kind of stuff. I'm just going to flick. Now there's not any VM up here. Okay, it's just along the edge. And as I pull and flick, that's basically going to fall out. Okay, take out the big pieces. And pretty much I pull from where I first start seeing it and just pull. Of course, it's going a lot faster when I'm not holding it in my lap and not in front of the camera. And if I wasn't running it through the drum carter, I would take the other side flick the ends open so that I could spin from the tips. But since I'm running this through the drum carter, it doesn't really matter too much. So I just, I go out and I flick and now it's ready. So I've got some flicked fiber. Okay. And I'm just going to adjust the camera because now the camera's in the way of the drum handle. and I'm in your light. Okay, now, here we go. What I'm going to work with today is, I'm gonna shake out a few more pieces. I just had a little bit of this left over, and this is silk roving that I bought, who it's been maybe six, seven years ago, and uh, you know what, when I saw it on the photograph, I'm not really sure what I was thinking because I'm not real big on like all these marble colors, but I bought it and when it came to me, I was like, uh, <laughs> what am I going to do with that? It's just all these greens and blues and it was just like insane. Now, I think normal people, of course, love this, but I'm like, color phobe so it wasn't really my thing 
And so I packed it up. Oh, and also it's it's really short. Okay. And you know how I feel about short fibers. It's like short. So draft for me drafting it was was hard. And like I said, this was some time ago, so I didn't even have I didn't really have the spinning skills I have now. So I packed it up and I sent it away to a friend. At least I thought I did. And I I bought about four ounces, or I thought I bought about four ounces, but I also spun some too, so it must have been more like six. And I was poking around uh, with some stuff that had been in a in the closet and stored, or uh, either that or it was under the shelves. There used to be shelves down there from the other videos. And it was under the shelves and packed away, and I didn't realize it was there. So I thought to myself, well, that would be perfect to go inside of some really nice white alpaca. That would give it a really nice color. And of course, uh, I love the feel of silk. I love the look of silk. Uh, I love everything about silk except for spinning silk. If you've never spun silk, you need to spin silk. I hate spinning silk. I love silk. So I spin silk anyway. It's one of those things where I don't let not liking it stop me from spinning. Uh, on the other hand, cotton, I don't like it. I don't spin it. <laughs> Just don't do it. Well, that's not true. Well, yeah, I guess that is true, really. I don't really spin it much. I'm considering these cotton nips. Okay, so at any rate, let's put this guy through the drum carter. Now, I am notorious about one pass. <clears throat> I never really do much more than one pass. But today, I probably will wind up with more than one pass. And even though this is a drum carter, it's going to it's going to put air in my bat, but I feed all of my fibers through um, the same direction. Okay, so I'm fluffing them out, but I'm going to feed them all in the same direction. So it'll be less woolen than it would normally be if you were um, drum carting. So it kind of gives me a semi woolen prep that is closer to the semi than it is the woolen. And I'm using my brother drum carter, which is 120 on the drum and 90 on the liquor, I think. I think so. It might be 120 on the drum and 120 on the liquor. You're supposed to um, turn slowly. Oh, I have a really hard time. It's like I just, anything with a wheel on it, I just want to go like full speed ahead. I don't know what it is about me and wheels. This is pretty moderate. And I am holding down the chest a little, which means I'm getting more on the liquor than I want. But that's because I'm running my mouth. And, of course, the all is not on here. It's probably on the other drum carter. So I'm just going to very carefully pick this off with my favorite beading hook. Uh, no, I'm not. Here we go. Handy needle. Very carefully. Very carefully. There we go. This stuff is just like, it's like fairy fiber. It's just unbelievable. I love alpaca only second to of course angora here we go okay so now I'm gonna go ahead and flick out some more put a little more in see you in a moment okay so I thought it might be useful for you to actually watch me do this and I'm in frame okay so this was kind of, I jumbled this in the back, so I don't have the control over it like I had the other one, it was one big clump. So basically I'm just kind of moving it around and I'm getting the ends, because I'm still lining up ends. Like, it's a hand quarter, yes, but I'm not carting it like you would woolen. I'm just flicking. So I'm not making a woolen prep, I'm still lining up the ends. 
at some point someone's going to ask me to make a woolen prep and I can make a woolen prep that's not a problem it's just that I don't generally for what I'm using my fibers for I don't generally make woolen yarns because I'm weaving and I'm weaving uh, a lot of work I'm weaving my own work so I'm not really making woolen yarns and I like my socks to be hard wearing and I tend to like smooth yarns unless of course I'm making some type of art yarn so I'm not really making woolen anything and it's not uh, a skill thing as much as it is a, a personal preference as to what types of yarn I like to make and when I start the Sprinter's Book of Yarn Design um, spin along I think that's a really important idea because you have to learn it's important oh, I think it is to learn what types of yarn you like to make you know and not to be limited by your skill you don't want your skill to limit you you want to have the skills to make whatever you want to me that's kind of the whole point of spinning if you're if people say well once you get a certain point you're only really gonna be able to spin thin yarns without making a bunch of applies uh, to me that's like really limiting and it it shows to me uh, a lack of skill because you can build the skills to make any type of yarn you want at, at your de at your uh, demand and I mean it's not the whole point of spinning is that you want it to make what you want it to make you did not want to be um, stuck with what they had in the store and that's the case we just buy the stuff that's in the store it's all all smooth plain yarns that's not what we wanted you know we wanted different fibers we wanted different textures all right I got a little bit of, of that in here and I was trying to keep it in the video frame ah okay now so we're going in uh oh I got something going on in the back and the key well, most important part for me is how much of the fiber am I going to pack on before I add the silk? What first of all, what I want is I want a nice thin layer to cushion the silk from the drum because I don't want to pick that silk, a little bits of silk, out of my drum card. Okay, that is gonna be a pain. So that's my, my first thing is making sure that I get a layer to protect the teeth of the drum carter for the from the silk for my own ease of cleanup you know getting the fibers out I have a wonderful friend who I spin for on occasion and she is allergic to Angora so well she's allergic to wool too and so um, it's something else to try to to clean that drum carter sometimes depending on the fibers that you're using and what I would do is I would book her for spinning and I would not use the drum carter a few weeks before so that I could do my best to get all of those fibers out because of course I'm raising angoras so I'm spinning angora right and a lot of it and uh, a lot of times I spin it without carding it, but I send blends to people, so that was a thing with the Angora. I card it usually before I sell it. And then, of course, all that wool. Oh, that gets stuck. Okay, so there we go. And it's time for me to clean the carter, too. I was using it to, well, prep the wool for the sock blend so I've got a ton of vim in there and I just take it over and just bang it off sweep it up you wouldn't believe how much dust comes out of this thing well I mean of course you with your spinners but it's still I know there are some spinners who never work with raw wool It's a messy business.
uh, we were talking about what your carters and things look like if you're spinning in the grease. And see, the beautiful thing is that lanolin, it heats up. And you just you can just get it off. You can rinse it uh, if you want to do that. But when it heats up, if you run some wool through it, it'll come off. So, and actually, the majority of my my dust here is not from a greased fleece. This is from alpaca. The dust from alpaca. It's not gummy. It's just dusty. So that stuff it does come off. It's not like some terrible uh, thing. It's not like some really heavy wax that just gums up everything and doesn't come off. If you didn't know, you wouldn't know that I put uh, greased fleece through my drum carter. There's nothing there to tell you that I do. Keep your stuff clean. Okay, so, anyway. Okay, okay I'm going to tease this out. And then you don't need a lot. I'm going to try this both ways. I'm going to try feeding it through. I still feel like it's kind of clumped. I'm going to feed it through, and then I'm going to put it on top of the drum. Oh, that's not too bad. But I, I do think I will need to send this through more than once, because I, I want that silk to really spread. Okay, so there we go. Going in. And then I'm going to zoom in and let you have a, a, a close up of what this looks like on the top. Oh, I think that's nice. Okay, let me go ahead and get you in closer. I'm going to block the light just a bit. Get out of the camera's way so you can see. Oh, there we go. That's perfect. Oh. And you know what that reminds me of? Um, <laughs> the birthday cake stuff. Oh, there we go. That's a uh, funfetti. That's what it is. A funfetti birthday cake icing. That's going to be nice. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and add on a few more layers. Let me add one more while you're watching. Zoom the camera out. Move the camera slightly. Oh, there we go. Normally, you don't see all, all of this moving because I cut these videos. Uh, it's blocking its own light. There we go. I cut the videos up in segments. This is just a quick one, so I really want to try to do this video in one pass. Okay. I didn't tease it out, and I'm holding the fiber down. I, I tend to do that. I gotta stop. That's why I'm getting a lot on the liquor. If I don't hold it, then I don't have that problem. And there's there's very little second cuts in this fiber. I just found a teeny tiny little one, and I hate nets. And so I just want to get those guys out of there because I'm going to pull out what's in the liquor in, and so I want to make sure whatever I'm pulling out. It's going to be of a decent quality. A little piece of something that I missed. And if, I have to be obsessive about this. I just, I do. I tried not being obsessive, but it doesn't work. I know artists are supposed to be like 
free form people and no care in the world and let things happen. And that is just just not me. Ooh, boy. If I can micromanage every tiny thing, then I micromanage it like everything. I always say I, I don't let the fiber do it at once. I beat it to submission. Boom. Sorry about that. And I believe heavily in controlled chaos. <laughs> it may look like it's going crazy, but there we go. Okay, now, so I'm looking at the bat, and I see that uh, it's about covered. It has just about covered all the silk. And so that's my cue that I would want to add more silk. To the back. I'm going to try to spread it apart. I could paint it on. Let me show you that real quick. Sometimes I do paint it on. Like I said, this is my version of Control Chaos Jewel. It's like right on the tripod. Go away, Jewel. And so I could paint it on like this, put it exactly where I want it. go like that if there was some place in particular I needed it because well I may like I said I may run this back through again so I don't really want to paint it on at the moment okay All right, I'm going to go ahead and finish that up and I will come back to recording once I have all four ounces on the drum quarter. Hello again. Uh, this is how the bat came out. It does look a lot like Funfetti. And I don't really think you get the full effect from the camera. Well, actually, that's not too bad right there. And sorry about Pepper in the background eating. She just suddenly decided that this was a time to eat, although the food has been there for, well, now she's walking away. Who's been here for about an hour or so now she wants to eat while I'm taking a video. Okay, anyway, getting the full effect here. And I did put it through again because it seemed like the first time I put it through, there wasn't enough silk there to the way I wanted it. But I didn't want to do it too many times because I didn't want it to come out muddy. Okay, so that's where it is. I'm going to stop the video here. I was thinking about actually taking you all the way through but I haven't decided what I'm gonna do with this bat if I decide to spin it um, I'll call the second video fun Fetty bat part two and then you'll I'll link it to this one you'll be able to find it all right thanks a lot everybody uh, as always I thank you for viewing click the thumbs up if you enjoy this if you didn't enjoy it well sorry about that you can always leave me some comments down in the comment section and let me know what you think I should do or ways I can improve my videos. I'm always working on trying to improve the videos and get them to the quality that I think that uh, the viewers will enjoy. Uh, down below in the description are my links to Facebook, Instagram, uh, my blog, and Etsy store. Please visit those for me. And thanks again for supporting me. Have a great day.